Uh, okay. Uh, good morning. Wait. Recording. Yes, it should be. Good morning. Good evening. Good. Good day, everyone. Uh, today, uh, I think that the, uh, the the hot topic would be a uh, uh, still a, a data frame uh, preprocessing uh, pipeline, uh, but more uh, precisely, uh, let's say, multiprocessing uh, side of the things. Uh, because already, as uh, Dylan remarked, it's, uh, it sucks uh, and uh, it should be somehow uh, ameliorated. And I'm, I, I, I have been working for this uh, for, uh, on the app for the last two days, just uh, looking at things that can be get uh, that can be uh, got uh, rid of. Uh, because actually, there's too many data frame usage in, in the uh, notebook, in Brandon's notebook. And because we are still, uh, uh, so we are still uh, having more and more data. So I think it's reasonable to focus a bit on, uh, like, memory performance uh, of the of the pipeline we are trying to build. Um, so yes, it's uh, Dylan. Maybe you can start uh, from your side, from your perspective, how it looks like. Oh, uh, well, we were, we were kind of just talking to you how we can get on the recording. Um, we were basically just saying that the way that the pipeline runs now, um, the, the full data frame is put into memory, shit, would, would, we, would we say like two to three times, something like that? Um, so basically, I have 16 gigabytes of RAM and just trying to run the pipeline fills it up completely. Yes, indeed, and um, it's not about just about the data frame copying from one process to another. It's also about the fact that actually it uh, it loads the whole uh, uh, sets of of data, and then uh, it's doing something on them, but uh, just but in the sense that uh, we have a uh, multiple files at once in a process, but uh, what we are we doing later on is just. Uh, Preprocessing one file at once uh, in each process. It means that uh, in each process you have an overload of memory, uh, like overload of data files read in that are not used currently in at, in a given moment. So uh, it can be also simplified in the sense that you uh, you read in just one file, you do something about it, you save what you want from uh, from the um, spacey model, and then you uh, go over to the next. Uh, uh, to the next file without creating uh, any data frame uh, uh, data. I mean, data frame variables or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It just needs to be refactored to make the memory management yeah. more efficient, because it'll make all future development a lot easier. Because right now it takes forever and causes issues with my system just trying to test it. You know. Yeah. Even even testing is like uh, you wait. Yeah. Five, on one record. Five minutes. You wait five minutes testing for on, five. five testing five. on one record fills up my memory. So. No, no. It's like that, that's why that's why I think it's it's crazy because it should be uh, somehow linear in the sense that it depends strictly on the number of uh, yeah. files you read in and not. So if you're working on that, that's good. Um, yes, I was noticing that yesterday, but I figured I would just finish my changes for pulling out the different um, levels yeah. first and then tackle that. But if you're on that, then that's good. Yeah, I think then we can copy, like copy paste pr in a primitive way because it's uh, more about just to uh, getting rid of some uh, functions. Uh, or, uh, yeah, if you get anything more efficient, yes. sorry, Slava, one second. Yes. If you get anything to the point where it is faster and it's stable, if you can let me know that way when I'm working, if you if you finish something before me, it'll make my work yep. a little faster. Sorry, Slava, what were you saying? Yeah, so um, I just hear about copy paste. Don't do it. It's not sustainable, and uh, you're working in a team, so you will get lost immediately. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so, <laughs> please do it. <laughs> if you have some changes, uh, please do pull request or <laughs> yeah. Just you should we'll do, do it. Uh, we'll you should follow uh, like official way to do things. We'll do we'll do it behind Slava's back, Lukash. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not about doing something. We'll do it, we'll do it, we'll, we'll do it when dad's out of we'll do it when dad's out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. I have that repo, Lukash. So um I can you have the link, yeah. You can just push any changes to that on yeah. your in your own notebook. Yeah. Good. Uh 
Okay, and, cool. Okay, so that's um, and then I just want to clarify like schema for the resulting different levels. Um, because you were saying something basically about how like the data frame for sentence level each each element will have a reference to the section level that needs to match the section data frame, right? Exactly. Okay. So, okay, I just want to make so basically we're going to be it's producing three increasingly complex data frames like the first just initial like top level document data frame will be pretty simple and then it breaks down to section and then one breaks down to the sentence level and then those three are all separately set into the python okay can i ask one question about data i feel like i didn't explain that very well sorry <laughs> what's your question Slav? <laughs> yeah so my question why data frame why do we need data frame because uh, i think it's quite slow and uh, it's only suitable if you need to do some computations but in our case uh, it's not clear to me because brandon you're uses saying, it and we keep it so no, no, no but, but, but uh, data frame is very slow construction really so we're, are we talking about why use a data frame at all or are you talking about do this in just pure python well, for all the pre-processing are you talking about why feed into spacey as a data frame no, for space you need data frame, but I think uh, you, you can load something to data frame and after you can do processing. But for now, like the process is just uh, gathering everything in one data frame. And of course, you need a lot of memory, you need a lot of CPUs to handle this, and it's not efficient. Uh, to be honest, actually, uh, as if I'm understanding uh, like the whole pipeline correctly, data frame uh, is used just to put things in an in a table this that, is exactly my point yeah that that uh, there's no uh, any let's say adver like technical advantage of, of official ad technical advantage of the data frame we are using in the terms like you can do some computations and things no we just put this in to have rows and columns and that it's that yeah fine. i don't think the data frame is slowing anything down Slava, because in at least unless i'm mistaken i'd have to sit down with the code and standing up right now but um, brand like basically the two parts that take a long time are like parsing the CSV and doing sort of um, some of the pre-processing there, like pulling everything in, and mm -hmm. then um, the actual model running. And all of Brandon's code is all pure Python. All the stuff that takes a long time, he wrote all that in Python. Okay. So uh -huh. all the data frame. So, so then, and then, and then he outputs a data frame, and then what we we're just kind of doing some transformations on the data frame, but it's not anything that's taking a long time. Mm -hmm. A follow-up question and rephrasing Slava's question: Why do we need tables? Okay. So if somebody has a, a better process in JSON files, right? With a whatever yeah. structure. Yeah. I mean, you could just do it. You could do it in a dictionary. Okay, but then when we change to JSON file, then we need to do it with everything. Like in, it must be uh, for all three levels. And no, 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 no. Um, so um, because we actually ingest everything to MongoDB, so you can get exactly the same information from Mongo. So you can just query and get it back to to the same process as a dictionary. Okay. I mean the the advantage with Python data or with uh, sorry data frames um, in that sort of intermediate step is just for kind of development that you can in a notebook get a pretty picture and sort of it's easy to work with. But yeah, but but if you have one hundred thousand full text papers in one data frame, I think it's something not really. I know, yeah. Uh, one then the really the 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 actual question is what it, when it's a uh, two hundred thousand, what when it's five hundred thousand, well, you know. <laughs> Anton's cracking. <laughs> but this is the way how it was developed originally. So I think we. No, we I mean, I'm, we're, just, we're not doing that much with data frames. We can do it all in pure Python. What's so old? You're saying well, the stick with. It was developed originally for 30,000 papers only, I think, full text. So again, like, let, let's not blame Brandon for, for no, this. No, mess. I don't blame. Oh, no, right? no, no, for sure, for sure, for, for sure. sure. No, um, I know. I think you have a. I think you have a good point. Now, the more I'm thinking about it. Yeah. So, uh, what's the summary? So, so let's for, for for this stick to essentially since again we already consider this we already have 
the data from the metadata file in our MongoDB database. And it's already in a cluster, like MongoDB is my own cluster, so it's kind of one step away from like full production mode. I mean, it's already on, on that level. So now what we need regarding all of this spacey vectors, etc., in a sense, we, we could kind of switch already from taking the metadata in into, I mean, it's a table, so data frame is definitely granted over here. And then reading all of the files, et cetera, we could already start kind of pulling from MongoDB, like query the collection of, I don't know, let's say thousand, like a batches of thousand or something, take them in, uh, then start processing all of the, uh, like kind of follow the same structure as, as those like dictionaries, right? Like again, huge JSONs yeah. and then just like process them. Um, yeah. And then uh, the question is, what is the good way to store them back at MongoDB as like separate collection of embeddings or, because again, we will have not only spacey, but right, we'll be adding some other, uh, essentially like all of this vectors, but like fields of, of that JSON. I think it should be so. in separate collection in same database, but in separate collection. And also we need labels. So it's like V19 or V22. And uh, we need to uh, to uh, create kind of function to get Delta comparison between previous version and uh, current version to, to get uh, quick processing of uh, new new records. So this is my point. If we can manage to do that, uh, any update from uh, for core 19 dataset will be quite easy to process. And we can get, probably in one day, we can get uh, all the records updated already okay. with spacing and uh, yeah. uh, So the, the question is, uh, how, we, how are we now pro um, processing in terms of uh those v19 things that we have still on the table uh are we finishing uh v19 pipeline with data frame and then we are going to uh, over to like to prepare this let's say to a pi pipeline without data frame but with json and mongodb yeah or do we break up with uh, v19 and we'll start once again uh for uh, JSON and MongoDB without data frame. So uh, technically, uh, it doesn't matter because um, in uh, the difference between V19 and V22 in MongoDB is not so big. So there are just few uh, fields added, and the basic structure is the same. So you have like full text, you have uh, title, description, yep. whatever. But, but then we need to invest more time now, like to uh, to pre pre to prepare a pipeline that would we work with mongodb exactly and, yeah. yeah so yeah. this is exactly my point if we'll switch right now so uh we will be prepared for future releases yeah yeah now because they're, they're coming it's, like every day yeah. yeah if it's like if we if we decide that actually data frame in this function that we are using now has no future for us and mm -hmm. we want to have a like direct mongodb uh um, connector a kind yeah. of yeah. And then uh, okay, then let let uh, my proposal would be okay. Let's let's waste this week, so to say, and mm. let's uh, let's refactor every Brandon's uh, pipeline to work directly with MongoDB. And uh, so, so basically, I I I did this partly, and I can share a notebook. Uh, what I did, I created classes, and I put probably seventy percent of workflow of Brandon in these classes. Yeah. So it's kind of clean process now and you can test it and also you can uh, you have possibility to get like uh, um, some some collection with uh, limit if you want you can try with 10 or 100 or 1000 papers and also we will be able to test uh, parallel processing uh, yeah, because like I think that the, the lessons we 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 draw from uh, working on Brandon's notebook last week, like like last two weeks, can we apply once again in in this new pipeline in terms of, of for instance of preprocessing without data frame? 
and the pair processing by multi processing, sorry, multi processing. Yeah, but, but, but this is exactly what I mean. So, uh, basically, this uh, faster path and uh, gathering information, collection of information, it's already done. And yeah. we have updated uh, V21 22 collection in MongoDB. So, uh, from you, you can basically start from this uh, yeah. step and you can continue. Yeah, it does, it does. Uh, and I think those things like about uh, th those random functions on mm, spacey model, etc. Exactly. It doesn't. Yeah, it's the same because it's like just our operation. Yeah, exactly the same. But we just need to jump in the middle of the process. Yeah. And continue. Uh, yeah. yeah. Break down. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And okay. after they will uh, release new uh, version of code, uh, we will just update again, and uh, it should yeah. be no problem because in Mongo it will be the same amount of fields and. Uh, Okay. Well, critical and uh, not not critical, but core fields will be the same. Yeah. So basically, like what I see, MongoDB, like having the data already there, it just simply simplifying the process of you don't need to read JSON files anymore from the disk, yeah. right? Yeah. All of that is already queryable. Yeah. Oh, what's the right word, right? So in a sense, it's just like that section of I don't know how many lines were before because like uh, version v9 like that generation of port was you need to construct the file names right yeah now they finally switched to kind of okay here is the direct file so it looks like again starting from metadata file is still good but we are already even next step after this you don't need even to read that field anymore has pdf dot json or something right yeah, they actually like, removed uh, all of all, all of these fields in this release the 20 something or 19? Yeah, in, in, in new release, uh, there are no like PDF field, uh, it has PDF or it has uh, PMC or something. So, you mean the Boolean field? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, the Boolean field, yeah. The, the Boolean field, they're gone from like P15, 19, and so on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Which, it's deprecated already. Yes. So, that's kind of like uh, my point that. Kind of the core 19 progressed a little bit, so now it's much easier. Like there is the, the field. If there is a field with the direct uh, relative path to a JSON file, okay, you process it. If not, then you don't, right? But we are already next level out of this. We already process the JSON file, so we pre-process JSON file. It's already in MongoDB. Now we just amplify that data with all of these different collections and just follow that. The only my only concern right now is this. Right now, for for essentially this uh, dictionary schema that will be stored in MongoDB, it mm -hmm. follows whatever is in JSON file format that AI2 folks chose for Core 19. Mm -hmm. And if they decide to do some breaking changes over there, this is where we will get in an interesting position. No, 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 of... we will not get any troubles with it because uh, we already have kind of stable fields like title and uh, abstract and uh, full text. So I mean, like, we will need to kind of, the pain of different versions will be there. That's what my, my point is because mm -hmm. we're not kind of choosing our own like schema, let's say, and crunch everything into it, right? We'll just follow that one. If that changes, then we will need to do crunching to fall mm -hmm. or something like this. It just, but I mean, it's not a problem for right now, especially if when we kind of V19 is our goal, right? And everything mm -hmm. else is incremental. I think we're in a really good spot right now to kind of execute. Yeah, that. and I would say even more interesting. So the process uh, of ingest now uh, in Mongo, because I added uh, uh, extra field year of publication. So I'm querying Mongo and immediately getting kind of a chart uh, with all values. And I see some interesting things like uh, in 2009, it was continuous, uh, continuously growing interest for coronavirus. I don't know why. So 2009, 10, 12, uh, 11, 12. And after it kind of goes down and after uh of course last year it's going up so there are very interesting things i already see and it can be also interesting to check uh, what is about uh, uh, how it's related to covid 19 basically because covid 19 is something that uh, was as, as a term was established last year and before we had other diseases 
So it's yeah. also something to consider how to analyze this. <laughs> It will be also interesting to plot it on a map. Like right now, we have that map for all the related pages. Yeah, right? we need timeline. No, no, no. We need timeline and we need countries. So we, we, we yes. see all COVID interesting in COVID 19 for different countries. That's interesting we could discover over there. For sure. Yeah. So, guys, it's really exciting now. Okay. So maybe I'll, uh, just to, 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 to sum up somehow. <laughs> Uh, I would propose that uh, that Dylan, Mary, and me were going after, uh, let's say, a new version of a pipeline that is uh, integrated with uh, directly with MongoDB. Uh, we're waiting for uh, like for a notebook that you you've talked about, Slava. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, then we we uh, we, we are going to adapt it to to fit the sentences, sections, and entire document yeah. level. Yeah. And I would ask also uh, Kachur, Kacha. Yeah. Uh, just because you uh, last time you you mentioned that you would like to work on a kind of sanity check. Uh, yeah, I've been working on that uh, the last couple of days. Basically, seeing like what's in the metadata file, what's the sort of the description that was given, and then what's uh, what we were actually given with the files. There's definitely some weird stuff going on. Yeah. Um, but that that's more that's other stuff we can talk about you know we can talk about that later okay. um, no just because my question would be if you could also uh, work I mean as far as it's possible now on a kind of a pipeline just to uh, check uh, differences between versions uh, in in uh, in uh, like in court 19 yeah so, so something that. something that would we work with Slava's notebook to mm -hmm. like to like you you take two different um, MongoDB uh, data versions and you uh, like you try to 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 figure out or to 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 uh, to investigate the differences between them in terms of uh, uh, I, uh, papers that are missing or new papers or things yeah. like. Depending what was on, removed, yeah. what was added, the different, you know, maybe different fields that were added, different, yeah, yeah. all the kinds of also, stuff. Also a kind of metadata, also not only that in terms of how many things are changed, but also mm -hmm. uh, how. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, okay, perfect. Oh, by the way, uh, the tutorial, there is, it, sorry, you go, you go, Anton. Let, let me just quickly just, so Hachitur, in change log, there is also like that information, how many was added, removed. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you can essentially do sanity check for that, I mean, kind of validation of that, that'll be awesome. So again, you have the what AI two report in terms of what they ch changes they made. Then we will have actual change, and if they all adds up, kind of okay, we validated the next version. If not, okay, this is something we need to report back to AI two or something like this. So just okay, kind of that, that's kind of what I've been doing, like. Uh, like I noticed when I checked recently the amount of uh, PDF parses, it wasn't like exactly the same number as was given in the in the readme. Um, <laughs> so there's stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, happens. yeah. And also in the fact that uh, like with the option so that we can create a kind of a sub collections of differences, like because if differences are now counting in thousands of papers, it means yeah. that are somebody's adding or removing a, a huge library of things that are. Uh, the question is how uh, who's the, who, 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 who has decided to remove them? Because if it's thousands of documents, it's like for sure that's not single person who decided. Okay, uh, this stuff is not relevant. However, I talked already with Maya, and they claim that. Uh, I mean that the Maya team uh, claims that actually. Uh, those papers are relevant that are uh, that have been removed. So I, I don't know. Uh, that's we, we well, have do we know the, why they were. Do well, we know why they removed papers? Yes. So uh, Kyle's response of the maintainer of COVID nineteen from AI two side. So they essentially are running their pipeline, and let's say if some publisher removes the paper from the catalog, they also remove it. Okay. Oh, so, so it's not based just, on quality or anything. It's just sort of a no, logistical thing. Yeah. So the thing is, like again, uh, AI two folks they don't do any quality check. Again, this is not their job. They're kind of 
the extractor oil, all, all the oil refinement into gasoline, diesel, you know, like other fractions. This is on our end. We refine it. Yeah, I like that. I like that metaphor. It's good. Um, can I ask a couple questions uh, of you, Slav, really quick? So I just want to clarify my understanding of what um, we're talking about. So you do you you use Brandon scripts to pre-process and pull into Mongo? The same, yeah. basically the same thing. Um, so yeah. all of them, yeah. all the versions are on there in in collections. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and then do you have? Are we maintaining like a collection of all papers that have ever been put in? Yeah, for uh, V9, V19, and V22. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. I just wanted to clarify. So yeah, I I, I would agree. With so you so guys. basically, I'm basically what what? Just adapt to MongoDB because it's going to be a lot easier programming in that notebook. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, Never mind. I was just asking those questions and then agreeing with what you guys have been saying. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> so, okay. okay. So if everyone is happy with uh, this, I think topic. we're in agreement then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we, then uh, okay. I think that there is okay because now we we've spent like half hour talking just about data frame and and MongoDB and and the pipeline. And of course, it's a focus of our work now. Uh, late on 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 let's say on the this basic pre processing by, by, uh, pipelines. Maybe there are some other questions regarding anything else. If no, then uh, I, I would propose to conclude this session. And, mm -hmm. and we will see uh, each other at the weekend. And I hope that we that with a bit more, uh, um, let's say feedback from the field, what's done, what's not, what we need to improve or think over once again. But still, thank you very much and have a nice day, evening, morning, night. All right. Thank you guys, have a good day.